Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to do an updated 2022 Senate election prediction. This is my uh, second to last Senate prediction. Um, this follows the la second to last governor prediction that will come out uh, later in the day. But right now is uh, the second to last governor prediction for the uh, 2022 midterm elections. And it's very interesting to see the way that uh, polling has gone and how uh, the country has shifted from uh, the, the Democrats being favored in the Senate now to the Republicans. And it's just a lot to take in right now. And I've sat down and I've gathered a lot of information I've gone through. And that's why I, it has taken me a couple of days to post for you guys. And I'm sorry that I haven't been able to post in a few days. Um, but... I have been doing extensive research and I've been taking a lot of time to figure out everything. And uh, this is the video. Um, we have this is my second to last one. I will actually be doing uh, my last one the day of the 2022 midterm elections on November 8th. It'll be out early in the morning, around 9 to 10 uh, a.m. Uh, on the eastern uh, on the east coast, uh, eastern time in the, of the United States. And later that uh, that day, at uh, around 6.45, I go live on November 8th. I will be live streaming the 2022 midterm elections the uh, on November 8th, the uh, midterm elections here um, in the United States of America. And so it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you guys can join me. Uh, remember, 6.45, you guys can go to my YouTube page and find it on there. Turn on the, the post notification so you know when I go live and all. So we got a live chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. We might have a couple of guests on there on the call with me, but uh, I don't know that yet for sure. But um, if not, it'll just be me talking, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. So with that being said, let's get started. So basically what's been going on, for the past few days and weeks, uh, Republicans have taken uh, back the the control of the generic congressional ballot, the generic, generic congressional vote, which that which means that they're like they're more favored to win races across the country. Um, for a while, the Democrats have had uh, had control of the, the generic vote. The, they they weren't up by much for the Republicans, but they did have a, a narrow lead, and that was just partially because of uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned and a lot of other just uh, just different things across the country. But a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about how they uh, how the Republicans got uh, the uh, the vote back, the generic congressional vote. What's very interesting to see now is that we have. Uh, something where you have a Democratic president, Democrat-controlled Congress, okay, and um, you know even though Roe v. Wade was overturned, we are still seeing a red wave year. Um, most of the time, when a Democratic president uh, first first uh, term in office, the, the first midterms normally turn out for the for the party who's controlling the White House. But as we saw with President Trump. In the 20, 2018 midterm elections, Democrats got in c control of a lot of different governor races, the House of Representatives, and a numer numerous uh, uh, statewide elections across uh, in each in each state. And now, uh, you fast forward four years from that, the, those midterms back in 2018 under President Trump, it happened. You're seeing you're seeing the complete opposite now. We have a Democrat president, a Democrat controlled Senate, and uh, House of Representatives. And I guarantee you, 90% of Americans across the country will agree with me that there is we're, we're not going in the right direction in this country. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, we have to agree on we need to fix something, okay? Gas prices are high. Inflation has hit an all-time high in the last 40 years, people. Okay, we haven't seen this since Carter, all right? Okay, uh, it, it, uh, taxes are high. Interest rates are up. Okay, if you wanted to buy a car now, four years ago or two years ago, it was let's just say twenty thousand dollars. Now it's double forty thousand dollars, and the car has is is in the same condition that it was two years ago, and now it's worth this much. Inflation, taxes, gas prices, many. Other things that has been caused by the the, the that the, from the Biden administration and the Pelosi agenda in in the in the uh, in Congress, the Pelosi Schumer agenda, 
we need to change something here. Okay, whether that means that Republicans and conservatives take over the House of Representatives, or we just or we just uh, gain our um, our strategy acro- across the, uh, the the broad spectrum. Um, but we need to do something, and this is the time that we're going to see is that it's going to work best for the Republicans. So without rambling on and rambling on about some uh, some some facts there, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. Uh, doing my prediction here. It's the second Alaska uh, Senate prediction, and let's, so let's just get uh, right in here. For the safe Republican states, we have Oklahoma and Oklahoma Special, okay? Uh, Kansas, South Dakota, North Dakota, Idaho, Utah, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, Kentucky, Indiana, and that is all. For Democrat safe states, we have the states of Oregon, California, Hawaii, my home state of Maryland, Connecticut, Vermont, uh, New York, and Illinois. For Republican likely states, we have uh, um, Alaska. We also have uh, Ohio. Now, this is interesting. Ohio. I used to have it as a, either a tilt or lean margin here, okay? But I've moved that up, okay? It is a safe, it is a likely margin for uh for JD Vance, there is absolutely no way that Tim Ryan is going to win now. Like the because of what the generic ballot has, okay, the surge of the red wave is coming. Okay, we are five days away. Okay, the time is of the essence. We have to act fast, and we're about to win here in Ohio. Okay. This is a great state. We they have we have great candidates in the state of Ohio. Okay, we have uh, the governor uh, Mike DeWine, great candidate, great guy, great governor. Now we have um, someone running for Senate, J.D. Vance, uh, Trump endorsed, uh, Trump supporter. Like this, Ohio is a very Trumpian state now. Okay, it carried Trump in 2016 and in 2020. Trump carried the state with eight percent of the vote over Hillary and uh, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Now. Even in 2020, when 2020 was a, somewhat of a blue wave, okay, when, when Democrats picked up the presidency, okay, they held into the House and they got the Senate, okay, and numerous governorships uh, in the 2020 election, this is a lot that happened uh, in, in the blue wave year of 2020. Uh, they were able to make Donald Trump a one-term president, uh, and they were able to uh, uh, like get the majority in the House of uh, – I mean in the Senate, okay? So this is very, very interesting, okay? So th- this is going to go as a likely margin for J.D. Vance. I have no intention that it would go any less than that right now. Um, but things can change in a few days, but I, I don't think that uh, anything will anything will change. Now, moving on to the state of Wisconsin, this will be a likely margin for uh, Ron Johnson. This is easy. Also, in the state of Iowa, uh, Chuck Grassley will win here again. I, I, he's, he's, like, popular for the – for the state, like people like him, but like I, I personally don't like him all that much. But you know, I don't live in the state, so you know. Um, so anyway, uh, now North Carolina, Ted Budd is going to win here uh, relatively easily. Um, and so with that being said, that sums up all the likely states for uh, Republicans. Now moving on, we have uh, the Democrat likely states. This includes the state of Washington. Patty Murray will win her reelection here. Uh, no surprise there. Also. Uh, in the state of Colorado, uh, Michael Bennett will win his re-election here. This is uh, pretty easy for the Democrats, and that sums up all the uh, all the all the uh, likely margins for the Democrats. Now moving on to uh, lean margins for the Republicans. In the state of Nevada, this is uh, this is easy. I think that uh, um, that Adam Laxalt will win against uh, uh, Catherine Cortez Masto. I think that uh, he will uh, he will uh, beat her in her re-election here, and I think that he'll go on to be the next uh, senator from the state of Nevada. And also in the state of Florida, I think Marco Rubio will win here against Val Demings, uh, around maybe a five to seven point margin, but he'll do very well in the state. Um, and uh, with that being said, that also leads me with the state of Georgia. Okay, right here, Herschel Walker. I think he will win here against. Uh, Raphael Warnock, I think uh, the, uh, Real Clear Politics has um, has him up uh, uh, very uh, regularly, very easily. And uh, in in five thirty eight, I hate this uh, polling group. I absolutely despise it. But it just goes to show you that a very bad polling group has the Republicans winning with fifty four uh, chances uh, in a hundred of winning here. So it's uh, 
you know, they they are getting getting close. Um, you know, uh, I think they uh, I think they will win around there for 54. But um, that that's what uh, 538 thinks. I think it'll be a little bit closer than that. But uh, you know, they're they're pretty off on a lot of things. So with that being said, uh, we also have the state of Pennsylvania. Guys, come on, uh, Doctor Oz is going to win here. There's no way John Fetterman is going to win. If you guys watch that debate, it was an absolutely uh, horrible. It was a horror show. Okay, like the guy started his opening statement with good night everyone like he can't he's worse than joe biden and that's saying a lot here like joe biden actually has like a problem like he's like has dementia or something and you know john fetterman i understand he had a stroke okay and that's like i understand that he has it but the fact that the democratic party is pushing this guy to become the next senator of pennsylvania his doctor said he's cognitively fit to become the senator, but yet he can't even finish the debate without stuttering or mushing words together, as he says in his opening statement, okay? It's just nonsense, you know? Um, so, I mean, I feel bad for the guy. Like, it's sad that what the what the Democratic Party is doing to him. Um, but yet again, I mean, this is politics. So with that being said, the, the doctor's in, okay? Like, if we had the election right now, okay— Dr. Oz would win, okay? And I don't think that there's any more undecided voters that are going to go uh, for John Fetterman or need to make up their mind. So with that being said, this is easy. This is going for Dr. Oz. Now for uh, Democrat-lean states, this is the state of New Hampshire. I think uh, I think Bal Don Boldick will do uh, very well in the state, but I don't think that he'll be able to uh, win against Maggie Hassan. Maggie Hassan is pretty pretty popular in the state, but uh, I think that she'll be able to carry it in the state of uh, New Hampshire. It's a very close race, but I think that she'll get it around a two to three point margin in the state. Um, and so that's all for the uh, Democrat lean states and now for Republican tilt states. This is the only state left, state of Arizona. This is a uh, this is a state that uh, has voted for uh, Mark Kelly back in 2020, a state that Joe Biden picked up in 2020. Um, so you know we've seen the state go tr more and more to the left as we as we've seen the past two years, but uh, I think that Republicans will be, be will be able to re reclaim uh, this state. And you know I, you know I've been talking to a lot of different people about the election and uh, what their thoughts on everything. And I got a buddy named Charlie, and you know he really hates these uh, radical lefts. And I was he he told me he's like I man I I really hate them. And I was like well I mean like you know. You can't really like uh, tearing down your country. You know, if you're a true patriot, if you're a true American, if you truly love this country, you would vote or you would do things that would benefit the people of this country, not tear it down. So with that being said, uh, yeah, they are radical left extremists. And, um, you know, if, and if anyone is offended by that, well, I'm sorry. It's just the truth, people. And so – with that being said, this sums up my 2022 Senate election prediction for uh, my second to last election prediction here. Um, so with that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button uh, and turn on uh, post notifications so you don't miss a single video when I post or when it comes out. So with that being said, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you, God bless, and God bless this beautiful country, the United States of America. Thank you.